whatever you're doing, you can take a minute now to stop, put your hands together, pat your feet if you're at work, to sing along with the St. John Baptist Church Youth Choir as we give them the highest praise.
Good morning, St. John. This is Wesley Shaw, and these are our, our announcements for Sunday, June 16th, 2024. Here at St. John, our mission is the Great Commission to evangelize the lost, equip disciples, extend compassion. You're invited. Please join us each Sunday for Sunday School from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. There are seven face-to-face -face Sunday School classes available. Dad. A dad is someone who not only raises a child, but also nurtures them, teaches them valuable life lessons, and is there for them through thick and thin. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. Proverbs 23, verse 24. Men's Bible study, men studying the word of God together. Open discussion, to wait is to wait. On Monday, June 17th at 7.30 p.m. Happy birthday, Pastor Jamie O'Graham Sr. will be will celebrate his birthday on Tuesday, June 18th. Let us shower him with love and appreciation. Send cards, email, text messages, and monetary gifts to express your love and best wishes. We give because we have been given much. Walking in the Spirit. Saturday, June 22nd at 9 a.m. at the Drew Wellness Center walking track. Following the walk, we will return to the fellowship hall for light refreshments. To prepare enough refreshments, please contact the church office if you plan to attend. Save the date, Sunday, June 23rd at 4 p.m. Installation service for Dr. Jamie O'Graham Sr. As president of the Baptist Educational and Missionary Convention of South Carolina here at St. John. Happy 71st anniversary to the NAMI Burroughs Circle. The Asia Wilson Foundation will be sponsoring a bus trip to Atlanta, Georgia on Friday, July the 12th as the Las Vegas Aces take on the Atlanta Dream. Charter bus transportation from Columbia to the Atlanta Dream Facility, game ticket, t-shirt, and a delicious box lunch. South Carolina Election Commission 2024 calendar for the month of June. June 17th at 12 noon is the deadline for filing protests of primary with appropriate county or state party executive committee. June 19th, Early voting for runoffs began at county registration offices and other voting centers. Hours 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday through Friday. June 20th, protest hearings for primaries held by appropriate county or state party executive committee. June 21st, deadline for notice of appeal to the state party executive committee from decisions by Party County Executive Committee. June 21st, deadline to vote early in person for primary runoffs. June 22nd, deadline for State Party Executive Committee to hear appeals. South Carolina African American History Calendar for the month of June. Our honoree is Ms. Leola Clement Robinson. Gethsemane Women's and Young Women's Auxiliaries, 4th Annual Community Baby Shower, September the 7th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Greater St. Luke Baptist Church, 5228 Farrell Road. Happy birthday to our four score members for the month of June. Ernest Dowdy Sr., Adele Rivers, Minnie Hinkleton. Happy birthday to all those who are celebrating a birthday this month. Weekly Bible verse, honor your father. I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. When he does wrong, I discipline him in the usual ways, the pitfalls and obstacles of this mortal life, but I'll never remove my gracious love from him. Second Samuel, Chapter 7, verses 14 through 15. For all other announcements and information, please visit our website at St. John Baptist Church, 1900.com. Thank you and have a blessed day.
Good morning, St. John. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning, St. John. Come on, let's stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Certainly, he is worthy to be praised. We are grateful this morning to be able to not only celebrate uh, our Men's Day, but also Father's Day as well. Let's give the uh, fathers and men that are here today a great round of applause. We're definitely grateful and certainly honored to be able to, you know, praise and worship our God in spirit and in truth. We thank God for those men who have fathered and rolled uh, many of us and guided us throughout the day, uh, throughout our years. We also praise God for the men who are, who are about to become fathers, and we are certainly grateful for those fathers who have gone on to be with the Lord, that their memories continue to stay with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Doxology will now have our invocation by our very own Reverend Cheatham. Good morning, St. John. Oh, it uh, warms my heart to, to think about my father and all the things that he taught me all the things that he did with me that and I really kind of feel sorry for some some people who I remember the first time that in school turning around when someone said they didn't have a father I still remember that day but our Lord I I, I, I pray that we stand up that men would stand up and be the fathers that we should be. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are truly thankful for our being here today. Lord, we're thankful because you are such a good and great God that you, that you allowed us to be here today. You watched over us all night long while we slumbered and slept. And you touched us early this morning with a finger of your love. Woke us up clothed in our right minds. And Lord, we thank you because we had our minds stayed on you. You allowed us to have food on our tables, clothes on our backs, and found our way out into the house of the Lord. And yes, Lord, you, you, you didn't have us to come here alone, but there were others who were out here for the same reason, Lord, and we're thankful for them. Lord, we thank you for our fathers. We thank you for our mothers also, Lord, but we thank you for the men who have trained us and brought us up in the admonition of God. We thank you, Father, for our fathers leading us to the Lord Jesus Christ, showing us the way, being a, a model who I saw pray every, every night, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all of our fathers who have raised us up. Lord, we ask you to bless men and women all over this world, but especially our fathers in our community, Lord. Bless them. Help them to know to do the things that will be pleasing to you. And by being pleasing to you, Lord, we realize that our children will grow up with the admonition of God because you told us to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this day. Bless the man who's going to break forth the bread of life to us. Bless him in a special way because he's, one of, he's a father. Lord, we ask that you would bless him and bless these men here, Lord, who are singing today. <coughs> bless them in a special way. Every man that is here under the sound of my voice, help them to realize that there is a God and that he rules and super rules. Amen. Now, Lord, bless these services. 
Bless this church, bless our pastor. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you for it. And let the church say amen. 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 And amen. St. John, if you can remain standing, we'll now have our scripture read by Brother Joseph Fleshman. Good morning, St. John. I will be reading from Psalm 1, verse 1 through 6. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is the law of the Lord, and his law Doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his session. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Thank you. Amen. Certainly, we thank our brother Fleshman for the reading of his word. Now, at this time, St. John, we'll ask that you would join in as our choir comes in praise and worship at this time. Good morning, St. John. <clears throat> Can we give our miracle worker a hand clap of praise in this place today? Oh, how blessed is the day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Yes, yes. I will rejoice and be glad Hallelujah. in it. Hallelujah. 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 We know that God is our provider. He's our protector. He's our keeper. He's our healer. And today we're going to start off with a song that says, Everything. Everything, everything you need. God's got it. Everything you need. God's got it. Hallelujah.
Let's give, the, let's give the choir another round of applause. <laughs> Song says, whatever you need, God's got it. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. At this time, St. John, just before uh, our very own uh, Deacon uh, Wendell Price come and give us the occasion for this morning, I want to take this time out to uh, welcome those who tipped to the door a little late this morning and welcome them again here at the St. John Baptist Church. Uh, here where we're celebrating not only our men's but our Father's Day on this morning. Certainly we are grateful to have you. For those who are joining us on social media, we welcome you and thank you for being a part of this service on this morning. Uh, now at this time, St. John, we'll turn this over to our very own uh, Deacon uh, Wendell Price as he gives us the occasion for this morning. Thank you, Reverend Vanderhorst. Good morning, St. John. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers who are here, and also to Pastor Graham, the ministerial staff, our members, our friends, and our guests. We are honored that you all have chosen to worship with us today as we celebrate Men's Day. So on behalf of Brother Wesley Shaw and the Brotherhood Ministry, we thank you all for being here. Now, on June 19, 1910, in Spokane, Washington, one of the first recognitions of Father's Day in the United States occurred at that time. We find ourselves now, almost to the day, 114 years later, here at St. John Baptist Church to celebrate Men's Day and Father's Day. So we know, again, that as believers, there are no coincidence in life. God has a master plan that has us all where we are for the time that we are supposed to be here. So today, 
the men of St. John come to celebrate Men's Day following the scripture of 1 Thessalonians, second chapter, verses 11 and 12. In those verses, we are told and instructed that as fathers, we should encourage and comfort our children. We also, most importantly, in those verses, it tells us that we are supposed to live lives that demonstrate God's calling. So when our children are trying to accomplish something difficult, a good father is there to encourage. When our children are hurting, a good father is there to comfort. But thirdly, as we live our lives every day, it is incumbent upon each one of us to live a life that shows the true meaning of being a Christian man. And that is to demonstrate true love and to be of service and a blessing to others. So again, we thank each one of you for blessing us with your presence here today because on this occasion, we are here to celebrate the many blessings that God bestows on each one of us Hallelujah. each day. Amen. So we thank you again for being here to worship with us on this occasion, and we ask that your life continues to be blessed richly by God, our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. First of all, I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the house. And for those of you who are not biological fathers, thank you for allowing yourself to be able to be fathers to some man, Amen. some boy, some girl, some lady. We've come through a lot. It's probably been about three and a half years since this brotherhood choir had an opportunity to appear before you. By the grace of God, we're here. By the grace of God. Hallelujah. After COVID, think about how devastating COVID was. Family members, friends, loved ones, who are no longer here with us today. God is truly good.
keeping us here, amen? If you believe that in your sanctified soul, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. Uh, just real quick, St. John, we don't have a program, uh, so I'm using my phone to assist with the outline. And uh, on this morning, uh, someone has sent me a Father's Day text, right, and the acronym for fathers. And it said, um, a father is a comforter, a leader, a protector, a hero, a teacher, and a provider. And um, as I was uh, trying to get back to my notes, um, I got a text uh, from my daughter I had been trying to teach her and her sister about texting in church, so I make them put their phone away. <laughs> and so she said in the text, hey dad, put that phone away. <laughs> and, so, What's up? And, and so I had to remind her, I said, hey, I'm still the dad, you know, I'm still the father. <laughs> but no, that goes to show you that they do uh, pay attention and listen to uh, some of your teachings, so we're grateful uh, to God for them. Uh, anybody excited about the word this morning? Amen. I said, are you excited about the word on this morning? St. John, it gives me a uh, great privilege to uh, introduce to some and present to others uh, this gospel uh, preacher. Uh, I know it's uh, Men's Day and Father's Day, and I was going to uh, ask his better half to come and introduce him, but because it's Father's Day or it's Men's Day, uh, I took the opportunity to do so. Uh, if I could recall, uh, the gentleman that sits behind me, uh, he's a, not only a great man of God, but uh, he's also a great friend. Um, when I think about this uh, brother, uh, he's always reaching. Um, what I mean by that, he's always trying to teach and always trying to share uh, God's word with God's people. And so if I had to uh, put him in comparison to somebody in the Bible, I would connect him with Peter. Not the cussing part of Peter, I guess, <laughs> but the one who goes out and try to, you know, reach and capture souls. That, that's the part of him I remember. Uh, I know uh, him to be uh, not only a great provider, but one who really loves and desires the Lord. And I think if you say nothing else about someone, uh, when their heart is passionate about serving God and serving God's people, uh, they are no stranger uh, to God's uh, word. So St. John, as the choir uh, make preparation uh, to sing uh, two selections, I believe, uh, the next voice uh, you would hear is none other than our very own uh, Marcel Dillon. Uh, hear he him as he come forward. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Good morning, St. John. Praise the Lord, St. John. Praise the Lord, St. John. There is a message from the Lord today. I want to give honor to God, He's the head of my life, my pastor, Pastor Graham, our shepherd, the ministerial staff, media ministry, officers, deacons, members of St. John in this wonderful choir today. I want to give honor to all fathers, father figures, big brothers, those who are trying to nourish the next generation coming behind them. I uh, want to ask God to bless us and continue to keep us strong. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started here. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, giving you honor, praise, and glory. We thank you for this opportunity, Father. I ask today, Lord, that you give me strength. I ask that you order my steps. Send me, Father, and I'll go. I ask you these and many blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Our scripture will be taken today from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. That's it. <laughs> the teacher, the father, and the husband. Today I will attempt to show how God has called us to be teachers, fathers, and husbands. Not only did he call us to be these things, he gave us instruction on how to be these things. Not only did he give us instructions on how to be these things, he gave us, he demonstrated these things for us. These are not merely titles given to the male species. These are mandates from the creator of the human race. The one who set the family order and established roles in the household, our father in heaven, the one who separated the light from the dark so that we could have night and day. He separated the water from dry land so the vegetation can grow from the soil. He created the fish and all that lives in the sea, but only after he created the sea itself. And God created the family after he created Adam, the teacher, the father, the husband. Everything that God created was preceded by what it needed to be sustained. We have a duty to our families, men. We imagine, let's imagine for a few minutes that the ocean didn't exist anymore or that the day and the night suddenly stopped. This would cause catastrophic problems. But we serve a good God who has his finger on the pulse. He knows exactly how much gravitational force it takes to hold the universe together. He knew exactly how far to set the sun away from the earth. He knows the interior working of all of his creation. He is our sovereign ruler. He set up his kingdom to work in perfect harmony. He gave us the instructions to keep it that way. Someone will say, and we didn't have a Bible in the beginning, but I beg to differ, because in John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible teaches us that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. But something happened. The words of the Creator came into question. Did God really say? Did God really say? Did God really say? Far too often we find ourselves at either end of this question. We are either asking it or trying some kind of way to answer it. Did God really say, did God really say that a man should provide for his family? Did God really say that a man should protect his family? Did God really say that a man should be a teacher, a father, and a husband? I could talk all day about how we fit God's word around our sinful lifestyles, but that's not the purpose for today. 
Today, we're going to see if we can learn a few things about the role of the biblical man. Because as men, if we don't know our role, we'll be bamboozled every single time. This world is going to tell us that we should be more easygoing. This world is going to tell us that we should explore our feminine side. This world is going to tell us that we shouldn't be so hard or rough. But what does God say? 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14 says, Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. And let all that you do be done in love. Did God just give us a role to play? Did he kind of just say, well, we're going to try a few things, figure this out, see what works? Did he say, you're a man, figure it out? The short answer is no. God is very specific in his instructions to us. As we study and apply it, and this is the kicker right here, y'all, learn to truly believe it. We can become better at being the image bearer that God called us to be. The teacher, the father, the husband. Let's explore the teacher for a few minutes. Yes, sir. The book of Psalm, chapter 32, verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. But listen to what he says. He says, I will do this with my eye upon you. Not just bark a bunch of do's and don'ts at you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you do what I say and not what I do. God is a father that leads by example. God says, I'm going to be there when you get it wrong. I'll pick you up when you fall down. Father God tells us in the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 15, he talks to Moses and he says, you are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I, even I, will be with your mouth and his mouth, and I will teach you what you are to do. Right before the Sermon on the Mount, we see the Son. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them. The Holy Spirit John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. These are examples of God teaching us. So now that we understand that we're made in the image of God and God is a teacher and all the fullness of his glory, what does that look like for us? I guess that makes me a teacher. The word teach is a verb, and it's defined as to cause to know something, to accustom to some action or attitude. Keeping that in mind, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, God says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your hearts. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. That sounds like all the time to me, y'all. We can never get too much of God's word. David tells us to hide it in our hearts. Teach and talk. The book of Ephesians, in chapter 6, verse 4 says, And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Admonition of the Lord is a phrase that means teaching the Lord's way through the Bible, not through some clever dude with a meme on Facebook. The Bible. The Greek word nathesia which is usually translated as admonish, 
in the Bible literally means to put in mind. It can also be translated as counsel, to warn or to instruct. Instruct them of God's ways. Proverbs 22, 6 tells us to train up a child in a way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let's talk about the father. Being a father is never easy. Being a father of nearly 30 years, I've made my share of mistakes. It's never easy. Our Heavenly Father has shown us that love doesn't always come wrapped in roses. Love means discipline. Love means saying no when it's the best thing. Caring enough to seem like the bad guy. Another question that is always posed to us is, if God was a loving God, why does he let bad things happen? My friends, I think the question should be, if God is a loving God, why does, if he's not a loving God, why does he continue to allow me to live even though I'm yet a sinner? It's because he loves us. But he will allow us to suffer the consequences of our actions. God told Adam, because you have disobeyed me, you will toil to live. He, Moses never made it to the promised land. Cain was banished and forced to wander the earth. Image bearers, fathers, discipline them. Let them know that it's consequences for every action. Set your family up for success in the Lord. Proverbs 13, 24 tells us, he who spares the rod hates his son. God said it, y'all. I didn't, Mike didn't say this. God said this. But he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Hebrews 12, 11. Now, no chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained in it. By this, your children will understand and respect authority. The husband. All right, y'all, this is where the train going to come off the track right here. Man. All right. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. This is a, we a Bible-believing church, right? Okay. The husband plays a crucial role in his family. Adam failed miserably. We always quick to say, well, it was Eve that ate the fruit. Eve got tempted. Eve this and Eve that. But where was Adam? Have we ever asked ourselves that question honestly? Either he... He wasn't there when Satan was talking to Eve, or he stood by and just let it happen. The point is, excuse me, y'all. The point is, we have to be present and willing to step in when duty calls. And I want to I wanna do a little bit better than that. I, wanna I want us to take a look at what our role model demonstrated to us. Throughout the New Testament, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ, him being the bridegroom. He teaches us. He corrects us. He gives us direction. He disciplines us. He made our sin his own. He took the beating for us. Isaiah said, or I wrote, he was wounded for our transgressions. When was the last time I did that? He was bruised for our iniquities. Anybody? He's hit by his stripes, we were healed. We were made whole. These are the things that we need to be doing for our families. No matter the cost. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, 
that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Oh yeah, he put on this old sinful flesh. He gave up all his rights and heavenly privileges. He lived a sinless life, even though he was tempted just like us. He was slandered and lied on. He was railroaded in a kangaroo court, whipped and flogged, carried the tree up the hill, did not say a word in his own defense. And he hung on that cross all day long. And then he died. One day went by. Two days went by. But on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand with a holy and a blameless bride. And now I can call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, my Lord and Savior. Do you love him today? Are you willing to stand in for your family? Are you willing to be a father, a teacher, and a husband? Are you willing to go to the fire for your family? Are you willing to submit yourself to the calling of the Father? If you are, we bring you, talk to you, anybody that needs to. We got a, a bunch of ministers up here who are trying to find their way, and we've learned some stuff. And we're willing to teach any one young man. Please just let us know where you are in life. There's no shame in it. A lot of these guys molded me. They helped me. And I think that I'm learning a lot right now. And so what I'm saying is, give God the opportunity to speak in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up one more time for this preacher who did an awesome job. The teacher. Amen. Amen. And the husband. Amen. Amen. And the father. The teacher, the father, and the husband. And he did a marvelous job in letting us know that God was our is, is our example. Amen. And he's willing to to show us, to lead us, uh, to be the teacher, the husband, and the father that God has called us to be. Amen? Amen. I want to ask you to stand at this time. Perhaps there may be someone out of the ark of safety, someone who needs the Lord, someone who has failed to be the kind of father that God wanted you to be. But as the preacher said, God is willing to take you in. God is willing to encourage you and to lift you and transform you and empower you to be the father, the husband, and the teacher that he has called you to be. And I praise God that he said that we are image bearers. We're bearing the image of God. And everywhere we go, whatever we do, we're bearing the image of God. He's made us in his image and in his likeness. And he wants you to come and be restored. He wants you to come and be saved. There may be one who's lost and just need Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now. Will you come? The choir is singing the hymn. Will you come at this time? Perhaps you want to join the St. John Baptist Church. Doors are open right now. Come under your Christian experience recommendations or as a candidate for baptism will you come today will you come will you come he will save you will there be one today just now oh 
he will save. Would there be one? If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. Will you come? Will you come? Only trust him just now. Just now. Perhaps there's a father, a brother, a son who needs prayer. Or there may be a mother or a wife who needs prayer. Will you come? That we might pray the prayer of faith together. We're going to ask you to come. All fathers, if we come. All fathers, will you come? Will you come? Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Yes, yes. Glory be to God. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. As every heart pray. Those who are still coming, there's still room. Let us all pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come as humble as we know how. You said that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Not a perfect man, but a good man. Father, a few of your servants come here this morning, standing in the need of prayer. God, you know what their heart desire. You know what all that they need. But God, I believe this morning after listening to the message, they've come to give their all unto you. So we want to thank you, O Father God, for giving us another chance at life. We want to thank you, O Father God, for not only healing and directing and guiding us, but also protecting us, Lord God. We want to thank you, O God, for these dire people who have come, Lord God, this morning just not only to hear a word from you, Lord God, but just to be led by your word, Lord God, to trust and obey in everything that you say, Lord God. You said in your word that if we delight ourselves in you, Lord God, you would give us the desire in your heart. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for trusting and believing in you. We thank you, O oh God, for you being the God of a second chance. Lord God, we thank you for leading and guiding these men here on this morning, Lord God. And helping them, Lord God, to not only be strong, Lord God, but to be an encourager, Lord God, to be a comforter, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, right now. God, we thank you, Lord God, for being a God, Lord God, who not only hears, Lord God, a God who sits high but looks low. And we want to thank you for it right now, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless all the men across this land, Lord God. Help them continue to lead, Lord God, as you have called them to be, Lord God. You said, Lord God, that you've created us in your own image and in your likeness, Lord God. And Father God, we thank you for it right now. God, as you have created us, Lord God, help us to be who you have called us to be, Lord God. Not what the world want us to be, Lord God, but what you want us to be. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us the privilege and the opportunity, Lord God, to live a life that's pleasing in your sight. And Father God, even when we've come short, Lord God, you've given us the strength to be picked up, Lord God, and stand again. And we want to thank you for it right now. Lord, we want to thank you for the messenger on this morning. Helping us to understand and know, Lord God, that we are to be a great father, a great husband, a great leader, Lord God. And we want to thank you for it right now. God, we ask that you continue to bless us, Lord God, as we continue to do, Lord God, what you would have us to do. We ask, Lord God, that you would have your own way in our life. We ask, Lord God, that you would use us for your glory. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you'll continue to bless us, Lord God. That you would keep us, Lord God. That you would keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace, Lord God, as long as it stayed on you, Lord God. Help us to not get weary in well-doing. Help us not to get distracted, Lord God, by the kids of this world. Lord God, you said that we cast our cares upon you, Father God. You will care for us. And we thank you for it right now. We again thank you for all those who have come forward this morning, Lord God. 
Those who stand in the need of prayer, Lord God. Some come for one thing, others come for another. But Father God, you have 10,000 blessings in your hand just to satisfy them all. And we want to thank you for it right now, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you'll continue to do the good that you see us all stand in need of. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to continue to lead your people in the right way, Lord God. God, we ask that you would just give us, Lord God, power from on high. Help us, Lord God, to do your will and do it your way, Lord God. And we want to thank you for it right now, Lord God. Father God, bless us in a special way and we'll be blessed. Keep us, Lord God, and we shall keep. And Father, if you do these things, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. Let's give it up one more time for Minister Marcel Dillon. Did an awesome job. Amen, 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 amen. Want to uh, say happy Father's Day to all fathers, spiritual godfathers, mentors who have stepped in and uh, been there for, for others. And we praise God for each and every one of you. We have uh, what we call a gift of love for our fathers. It has a mug in there for you to uh, get your morning Joe and uh, make sure you, you're up and ready to go for, for the morning and for the day. But it also has these words, Happy Father's Day. Uh, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's Joshua 1 and 9. And so we want to share that with you. But we're going to ask at this time that the uh, ushers and perhaps some young men can help give out these bags to our men and to our, to our fathers, to our fathers. I want to ask our fathers to raise your hand. And uh, once you get, receive your gift, you can put your hands down. Uh, but we want to make sure that you receive. And while you're doing that, I want to thank Minister Wilhelmina Wilson for putting these packets and these gifts bags together. And amen. Thank you so much for your sacrifice and your commitment. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let them sing something or play something.
Let's give it up for these men, our men, male chorus. I, I think they had a whole lot pent up from a long time and they wanted to get it out. Amen. I mean, it was awesome, wonderful. We're going to have to get them back in, right? Amen. Good job. Good job. Amen. Amen. And also, uh, Reverend Vanderhorst, let's give it up for him as leading us today. Amen. And all our participants, let's give it up for them. Amen. Again, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. I want to uh, ask the Nanny Helen Burroughs to please stand. They're celebrating 71 years of Christian service. Beautiful women. Christian soldiers and servants of the Lord. Uh, Sister Stephanie Duncan is the president. And uh, they're donating a uh, donation to the food pan pantry in memory of two of their uh, wonderful um, leaders, our mothers of the church, and that is the late Ruby Shumpert and the late Mother Annie Lord Camacho. They're giving it in their honor. Let's praise God. Praise God for them. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And speaking of uh, Annie Lord Camacho, her funeral will be here on the 24th on the 24th and we ask that you continue to pray for the Camacho family also continue to pray for sister Regina Reardon as her father's funeral was this past Friday at Trinity uh, Baptist Church amen? amen amen of course next week Saints your pastor will be installed here as the 18th president of the Baptist Educational and Missionary Convention of South Carolina, right here at St. John on next week. Amen. Amen. And uh, we certainly know the committee is working, working hard to make things, uh, prepare uh, things so that we will have a wonderful time and so that our honored guests uh, will be taken care of on next Sunday. Sunday morning, the Reverend Joe Albert Bush will preach uh, for the worship service, and Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, uh, Dr. David Peoples, uh, president of the Progressive National Baptist Convention, will be our installation preacher for the 4 o'clock hour. Amen? Amen? Amen. want to thank God for uh, my wife, and I were celebrating 26 years of marital bliss. Amen. Amen. She's on her way back from a conference. Her and our daughters are on, our way, on their way back from a conference. And we praise God for them. Amen. Brother Ben and Karen Adams, are you here? Please stand. 34 years of marital bliss. Let's give it up for them. And... Brother James and Juanita Benson, want to ask them to stand? 49 years. Amen. 49 years of marital bliss. Amen. The Lord is good. Back in the hands of Reverend Vanderhoek. Thank you, Pastor Graham. Thank Pastor Graham for acknowledging uh, the opportunity for acknowledging everyone, but officially just before... Um, our hospitality team comes to acknowledge our special guests on this morning. Uh, we're going to ask um, our very own chairman, Deacon uh, Ben Duncan, to uh, make an announcement. St. John, we've got a lot going on, and we, we thank God for keeping us busy. Uh, and we see that the Nanny Burroughs celebrated 71 years. But on Wednesday, our pastor will celebrate not 71 years, but he will celebrate, I won't tell it, but he'll be celebrating a birthday. So next Sunday, if we could bring cards and letters just to let him know how much we love him and how much we appreciate him, uh, let's do that. And uh, I know we've got a lot going on next Sunday, but we have to find the time to acknowledge and thank our pastor for the way God has led him over the years. So. Uh, just remember to do that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Deacon Duncan. So now at this time, St. John, uh, if we could ask our uh, very own Sharon Miniweather and Jermaine uh, Reigns to come and acknowledge our uh, visitors at this time. Good morning, St. John. Sorry for that. Of course, I'm not Sharon or Miss Erlene. I was asked by, of course, our very own Deacon Wilfred Rogers that I handle the um, moment that we're currently acknowledging. So ladies, y'all continue to have your break. We men's got this, okay? <laughs> now, fellas, to everyone that is gracing our presence, first, I would like to say to our newly elected um, president, Pastor Dr. Reverend Jamie O. Graham Sr. and the men would like to acknowledge all who have come to enjoy this joyous occasion with us. Now, y'all made my job easy. I don't have any cards. I went to the hospitality staff and we didn't receive anything. I know that they have to be someone visiting today on this Father's Day in the house of the Lord. So if you are visiting, since I don't have any cards in my hand, I will ask that you will just stand Remain standing until you have been acknowledged by our very own Reverend Dr. Jamie O. Graham Sr., the pastor of our church. So if there's anyone visiting today on this Men's Day, could you please stand? And I ask that you remain standing, fellas, ladies, and family. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Graham, these are our special guests who have graced our presence today on this Men's Day. Thank you all for choosing our church, Pastor Graham. Thank you, Brother Quadre. You could have chosen any other place to worship today, but you came to St. John, and we appreciate you coming. May God uh, richly bless you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. We know that you have received us in a very inspirational word from this great preacher, and we just ask that you would go and do likewise as he preached the word today. And we want you to know that we love you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. If you want to know a little bit more about the St. John Baptist Church, our hospitality ministry will meet you at the door. Just tell you a little bit more about the St. John Baptist Church. And if you care to join at that time, uh, we will gladly receive you at that time. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to ask those who came to visit with their fathers today. I know you have children who are here today or family who are here today who came to visit. I want to ask them to stand, please. Amen. 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 Bless you. Deacon Hangleton is back there today. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. And of course, uh, the Felders came to see their father. We praise God for them. And Deacon Hughes is here again today. Let's praise God for Deacon Hughes. Amen. Amen. St. John, we're going to let you go. Just before we uh, close out and ask uh, Minister Dylan to uh, give us the benediction, uh, we would not uh, let you go without uh, paying your tithes and offering. Amen. So we're going to call. <laughs> so we're going to call our very own Reverend G. J. Kennedy to uh, give us our offertory prayer at this time. Amen. St. John, the offering uh, is on the stream. You can give by uh, mail, use the uh, debit card outside, or you can use the envelope system. Amen. Amen. Kennedy. Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity to give. For you've been gracious to us. Lord, we thank you for blessing us, pressed down, running over, and shaking together, God, that we can give, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, St. John, right now we give, we give joyfully, Father. We ask you to bless us, God, two hundred four, Father, in the name of Jesus. And let your will be done in our lives. We know that the giving is going to be used to your glory and the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. All right, St. John, thank you all for, show, for sharing with us again in this wonderful occasion. Um, we want to give the benediction now. We're going to let everybody go, okay? I know it's the only thing holding us away from our barbecue dinner today, right? All right, all right, all right.
May the Lord, repeat after me. May the Lord keep watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. In Jesus' name, amen.